come to worship. Amen. Yes. Yes. You count on this to be a place where God's people are heard. That's right. Because I may have to live the whole rest of the year on this. <laughs> saying 
explain to them, when you're invited by anyone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in the best place, lest one more honorable than you be, in, uh, be invited by him, and he who invited you and him comes to you and say, give place to this man, and then you begin with shame to take the lowest place. Right. But when you are invited, go and sit in, down in the lowest place, and when he who invited you comes and said, Friend, go up higher. Then you will have the glory and the presence of all the, those right. who sit at the table with you. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Now that doesn't sound like it has anything to do with healing this man, but it does. All right. he drops it. it has to do a whole lot with the people who were at the feast. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, he makes a little distinction. He's telling, I like Jesus' teaching. Y'all should read it sometime. Yeah. <laughs> it's good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jesus is teaching, and Goodness. he says, Goodness. now there is a wedding feast. Uh-huh. He didn't say, I'm talking about you folks at this feast. He said, I'm talking about a wedding feast. Maybe y'all catch on. <laughs> well, well, well. It's an invitation event, because I read it in verse 12, said, and he also who said to him who invited Jesus, hymns with a capital H there, those of you so this man, this Pharisee, had invited Jesus to this dinner, to this feast yeah, yeah. that's taking place. Yeah, yeah. Now what do we know about him? We, we know that he's a Pharisee. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Pharisee's a religious person, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and it says he's a leader among the Pharisees, so that means he's a pretty important religious person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At least in somebody's eyes he's important. And, and people listen to him. Now I want to take you back to this feast and what's happening in this feast when we look at it. Jesus invited. Yeah. Leader of the Pharisees probably asking his friends and family because if you read after verse 12 he talks to the host about who you invite. Well. I don't think it was about 10 minutes and 5 minutes and 3 seconds and all that kind of stuff I'm going to get. i got time to talk about that. <laughs> but but I, want you, I want you to know that it's there. All right. Yeah. And he's, he's not through when he finishes talking to the crowd. He's talking to the invited guests. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well. I don't think that that man with dropsy was invited, but I think he was brought in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because I don't hear about anybody else with dropsy. Yeah. I don't hear about anybody else with leprosy. I don't hear anybody that was in poor, stinky clothing that James oh. talks about in another place. Yeah, yeah. And he doesn't talk about anybody who, who's not rich enough or who's not holy enough. You know, there are some people who are so holy-minded they're no earthly good. Yeah. Yeah. people like that. Yeah. Oh, see. Yeah, yeah, Y'all know there's some people that they walk around on angels and they never, well, angel wing, they never touch the ground and do a thing. <laughs> well. I'm not pointing any fingers, okay? I'm, I'm just saying that you need to know what happened. So Jesus was an invited guest, and if you look at verse 1, in verse 7, verse 12, there's no question about it. Now it happened as he went into the house of one of those of the rulers of the Pharisees uh, to eat bread on the Sabbath. They, that is the crowd, watched him closely. So he told a parable to those who were invited. And verse uh, 12 says, and he also said to him who invited him, Jesus is invited, the guests are invited. Jesus is not there by accident. Jesus is there for one reason, and it's not to eat. Come on, God. This sick man, yeah, and from the way I read the scripture, this pitiful man, yeah, yeah, in a bad shape. Uh, what day is the feast on? Sabbath day. Sabbath day. Sabbath. There's a trap being set. Yes, sir. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come there on. is a trap being set. There are people who come to worship every day who are not. Let me change that. There are people who come to church every day that didn't come to worship. All right. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Right. There are people who come to the meeting who are trying to spy out and find out what's wrong with everybody well, instead of what's right with Jesus, who is the Christ, the Savior of the world. Amen. They come looking for problems and not for answers. Yes, sir. And Jesus ran into that problem. Hold on. These Pharisees spent a lot of time trying to set Jesus up. I want you to look with me at a couple passages. Matthew 22, verse 15 yeah. through 19. There's a bunch of lawyers and Pharisees and scribes, and they get together. Yeah. And they take out a piece of money, and they say, uh, do we need to pay taxes to Caesar? Well, let's see. You know, people have been complaining about taxes a long time. Yes, sir. Nothing changed. <laughs> we still complain about it. Yes, sir. And I think we should just say that kind of something I'm asking about is visible. They've been doing it since the beginning. That's probably not a good answer, but, but, but Jesus is not being asked about taxes. Jesus is asked about where you're leaving. 
Yeah, That's right. yeah. But I want you to look down here. And it's about verses, verse 18 after he says, is it right to pay tax? Or they ask him, is it right to pay tax to Caesar? Jesus knowing their evil intent. Yeah. Jesus is not blind. He sees what we don't see. Amen. So he knew their evil intents and he said, you hypocrites. Yeah. Why are you trying, to, and this is in, uh, in the New International Version, why are you trying to trap me? That's right, yeah, yeah. 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 I like it because you use the word trap there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Test me, you'll find it in some other translations. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's a trap. They're setting a trap for him. Always. And in Matthew 19, the Pharisees came when the woman was caught in adultery. And they said in verse 5, Now Moses said in the law, uh, testing him that they... Uh, Moses said in the law, commanded that she should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him that they might have something to which to accuse him of. That's right. Set the trap again, God. These people are setting a trap. Jesus knows every time he goes, there are people watching. I wish I could have walked into that feast. Because what the text says is when Jesus came, the guests were all watching him. You ever had that experience? You walk in and all of a sudden everybody starts looking at you. And you start worrying about what's not zipped and what's not. I'm not ever going to see me preach for one of these airport events. I'm going to have a wooden one. But everybody's looking at you and then you wonder what they're looking for. And you know what they're looking for. They're looking to trap him. And I can give you example after example yeah. uh, of where they're trying to trap him. And that's exactly when they were all watching him. I believe that's the reason the man with dropsy was there. To see him being healing. Well, Jesus has been healing people all the time on the Sabbath day. In Luke chapter 4, verse 39, he healed Simon's mother. Luke yeah. chapter 6, and verse 6, healed the man on the Sabbath with a withered hand. In Luke chapter 13 and verse 14, yeah. he healed the woman that had been crippled for 18 years. In John chapter 5 and verse 9, he heals a paralytic at the uh, pool of Bethsaida. Yeah. John chapter 9 and 14, he heals a man that was born blind. It keeps going on. Mark chapter 1 and, and in verse 21, there's a demonic. He, he said, I'm not looking at the calendar, I'm looking at the Word of God, the Word of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. By the way, you know what the church has done since the first century? We flip it around. We don't try to do the work of God except on the Sunday. Oh, that's right. The rest of the day, we leave alone. That was the wrong direction. Yeah. He wasn't saying don't do. He was saying do what needs to be done. Uh-huh. But you know, Jesus had a whole different lesson to teach. He wanted to teach about error. Do you know that there's arrogance in the church of Christ? Well, yeah. You know there are people who dress up to be seen. Yeah. We're supposed to be making sure that he is seen. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. People see you that they may glorify your Father in heaven. You see Man. your good works that they may glorify your Father in heaven. It's not for anybody to look at me. That's right. It's not for anybody to say, oh, look how great or how wonderful he sounds. I don't care what you think I sound like if you hear the one that I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Say on, God. Yeah. And so, we have a parable here on pride and arrogance. And I want to tell you, those people may have been watching him, but he was watching them. Amen. Just like he's watching us today. That's right. That's right. He had a lesson to teach. He talks about these chief seats. When you get invited to a party, yeah. let's make it a banquet. Because you've got to honor somebody at the banquet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you get invited to a banquet, it's better for you to sit on the lower seats and the higher seats when you're going to get invited. You know that happened to me one time? Not exactly like that. I, I believe it was it was almost 45 years ago. I was a young preacher. My brother was preaching down in Pensacola, Florida. Mm -hmm. If memory serves me right, there was a supper that was being conducted to raise money. I believe it was for Southwestern. Mm -hmm. I'm not blaming the people there at Southwestern. It had nothing to do with them. But we came in. He was a preacher in Pensacola, and I was just busy. I was a preacher, but not nobody knew who I was. That's okay. So we came in and sat down, and this lady came over, and she recognized him. This is my brother. This is my 
and beat you all the time. Oh, y'all are supposed to sit up here. Well. We were next to the head table.
loved me, God. He loved me, God. He loved me, God. Luke chapter 14, verse 11 says, For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he humbles himself will be exalted. That's right. In Proverbs chapter 16, we're told that pride goes before destruction. destruction. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit. Go on, talk to So when you begin to look at this passage, there's some problems. Yeah, yeah. But it's not with the master. Yeah. Jesus is doing what Jesus is supposed to do. Yeah. And he was set up. And I want to tell you that there are times in your life that you're going to be set up. Yeah. <coughs> do the right thing. Yes, sir. Yeah. They tried to trap me. All right. Okay, they tried to trap Jesus. He went all the way to the cross. The cross. <coughs> You know, I remember those three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. You remember when they were going into the fiery furnace, what you're saying? We believe our God can save us, but even if he doesn't, he's still able. We are not going to bow down. That's right. Yeah. Man. 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 We need to know what we stand for and who we stand for. That's right. So when we begin to look at this passage, you need to understand the pride is a problem. It's a problem then, it's a problem <coughs> But I want to get back to what Jesus said in the parable. It's going to be hard for some of you to take. <coughs> he said, if you go to that feast and someone more honorable than you comes in, Newsflash, there are people more honorable than we are. Amen. Yeah. There are people better than we are. There are people more spiritual than we are. Yes. Sometimes people say, who, who should I go ask a question? I always say, find the woman in the church that knows the Bible best. She's been teaching children since she was able to teach, and most of the men have been out doing all kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs> well, yes, sir. I believe in the elders, I believe in the preachers, I believe in godly men and spiritual men. I think you ought to look for them. But I believe that women have a place in God's church. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 And it may be that sometimes they're more honorable. When Paul wrote about Phoebe over in Romans chapter 16, yeah. he said, she's been a servant of mine. She's been a friend of mine. She's, she's somebody that you need to help whatever way she needs to be helped. You need to do that. There are places that there are people more honorable. And when we're worried about who gets the chief seats, we're in the wrong part. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I should talk about the pops, I guess, but he's here. <laughs> Anybody else ever talk about him? Yes. 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 I'm watching you. You're still here a year later, too. <laughs> <laughs>
this week at the Breast Cancer Forum, and I noticed the paper that got thrown out today said Dr. Keith Ellis, and I thought, wow, well, I got a promotion. <laughs> Somebody said, you're going to claim a retraction? I said, don't think so. You <laughs> <laughs> know, Minnesota, just come see me. I got, I got promoted yesterday. Well, it doesn't matter what it says on the tag. It matters what you do in the kingdom. Yes, sir. Yeah. If you want to be honored, you need to be doing the work of God in the kingdom. Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, it was the great apostle Paul who said, I say through the grace that has been given to me that everyone who is among you ought not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, yeah. ought to think sober. 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 That doesn't mean not drunk, that means sound judgment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That covers that, but it doesn't <laughs> mean that. It's special. It's special. And, and, and I want you to listen, this is a new century version. I like to read from a lot of versions because it gives me a lot of perspective. Yes. All right. and, and in the New Century Version, he said, I have something to say among you. Do not think that you are better than you are. Right? Yeah, yeah. Now, I want to talk to the ladies just a minute, okay? Me and you can listen in because there's probably a lesson in for all of us. Yeah. I want to think back to you when you were in your romantic days, okay? You're, I mean, not that you're not in marriage, but you know, I'm talking about the dating days and the the, the, trying to pick out Mr. Right. There's so many Mr. Wrongs out there, you've got to be careful how you pick Well, I talked to a lady the other day. She said, I've been married five times. I said, You're not a good picker, are you? She <laughs> <laughs> didn't know what she was doing. She <laughs> talked to another lady one time. She said, I'm trying to look for a good man. She said, Where? She said, Well, I go to all these clubs in town. I said, You ain't going to find one there. <laughs> she said, Where are you going to go? I said, Daddy, tell about the church. Well, I don't think it was held more excited. But, but ladies, how do you feel when you get all dressed up and get all your beauty on and all that good looking stuff that you ladies do and you squirt on the perfumes and you smell good and you look good and, and, and you're styling and you're wearing your shoes and I don't know why women wear those high heels that y'all do. Yes, sir. And that's okay. Uh, and then you get there and he says, let me tell you about myself. You are so lovely.
whatsoever things were written for time or were written for our learning. The context is we're in it. And we're supposed to learn from it. That through patience and comfort of the scriptures we might have hope. The message is <coughs> Jesus wins every time. Yes, sir. The message is when I try to exalt myself, I'm going to be humble. That's right. I'm going to embarrass myself. I'm not going to be helpful in the kingdom. I'm going to be hurtful to the kingdom. And I need to go where I can be pulled up. That's right. Because Jesus is about pulling people up, not putting them down. That's right. That's right, preacher. And that's the problem with too many people in the church today. We're putting people down that we ought to be pulling up. Mm -hmm. You know, God's a great God, and His church that's is a great body. That's right. I like to be with Christians. I like to be on this lectureship just because we're family. Yeah. You don't have to be in those breaks five miles or half a mile, whatever you said, half a mile away. I know if you take all the looks and trainings, you can get at least 0.6 mile out of it. Yes, sir. <laughs> we're brethren. We're trying to get to the same place. Yeah. And folks, I've got to tell you, we're trying to get there with others, too. We're not trying to get there alone. That's right. right. I'm going to talk to the Enterprise folks, and then we can go out to Judea and Samaria and all the other most parts of the world, okay? Go to Rome. This community in which we live needs Jesus more than anyone else. Amen. 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 And you can take that over to Ozark, too. Amen. You can take that to Dothan. You can take that to the uttermost parts of the earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please be humble enough that God can use you. Amen. May God bless you in your efforts to serve Him. Amen. Amen. Amen.